In this section, we're going to be looking at other types of equations. Okay. Now here we're going to be solving polynomial equations by factoring. We're going to also solve radical equations, and also equations that have rational exponents, and also equations that are quadratic in form, and also we'll be looking at equations that involve absolute values. Right, we'll start off with a polynomial, polynomial equation. Of course, a polynomial equation is the result of setting two polynomials equal to each other. And the equation is in general form if one side is zero and the polynomial is on the other side, and the polynomial on the other side is in descending powers of the variable. And then the degree which is the highest exponent of the polynomial equation. That's again the highest degree of any term in that equation. And we're going to look at a few examples here. We'll start off with a linear equation like 3x plus 5 is equal to 14. That's an equation of degree 1 because the highest exponent here is a 1. Okay. And any polynomial equation of degree 1 is a linear equation, as I just mentioned. This next one, 2x squared plus 7x equals to 4, that's an equation of degree 2, because the highest exponent here is a 2. And those type of polynomial equations are called quadratic equations. And then the next one, this one is an example of a polynomial equation, because this equation has degree 3, the highest exponent here is a 3. This is x cubed plus x squared equals 4x plus 4. That's an equation of degree 3 because the highest exponent is a 3. And there are some polynomial equations of degree 3 or higher can be solved by doing these three steps. Number one, you want to move all the terms to one side. That way you can obtain a zero on the other side. And then second, you want to factor the polynomial completely. And then the third step, you're going to set each factor equal to zero. And then you're going to solve that equation for x or for the variable. Okay, take a look at this first problem here. Here we want to solve this particular polynomial equation by factoring. This equation reads 4x to the 4th is equal to 12x squared. 4x to the 4th is equal to 12x squared. And we want to solve this by factoring. Okay, what we want to do here is get a 0 on one side of the equation. What I'm going to do here is take that 12x squared and move it over to the other side. And when I do that, that 12x squared becomes minus 12x squared and then that's equal to zero. So here I have the equation 4x squared minus 12x squared equal to zero. Now in this case I only have two terms so what I'm going to have to do here is pull out a common factor that's in 4x to the fourth and 12x squared. Well in this case that's going to be a 4 and an x squared because with the 4 and the 12 the common factor that which is the number that can go into 4 and 12, that's 4. And the variable, we take the one with the, the common variable with the smallest exponent. The common variable is your x. The smallest exponent is, is the 2. So we use 4x squared. Now, we do 4x to the 4th divided by x squared. That's going to give me x squared. Minus 12x squared divided by 4x squared. That's going to give me 3. So I have the x squared minus 3 in the parentheses, and that's multiplied by 4x squared equal to 0. Now what I'm going to do is set each term equal to 0. I'm going to set the 4x squared equal to 0. And then I'm going to set x squared minus 3 equal to 0. So here, 4x squared times x squared minus 3 equal to 0 will mean that 4x squared is equal to 0 or x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. Again, I'm using the zero product property in this particular step. So now I have two equations. Each one of those I'm going to solve for x. 
So for 4x squared is equal to 0, if I divide by 4, I'm going to have x squared is equal to 0. And if I take the square root on both sides, the only number squared that's going to give me 0 is 0. So x will have to be equal to 0. Now for x squared minus 3 is equal to 0, if I add 3, this one will have x squared is equal to 3. And then I'm going to take the square root on both sides because I want to get x by itself. So here x will be equal to, and in this case, plus or minus square root of 3. So in this case, my solution set would be 0 square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. All right, so that would be the solution to this particular polynomial equation of degree 3 or higher. In this case, this is a fourth degree polynomial. It would have four solutions, but it comes up with three. But, And that's because x equals 0 is a double root. Or it has actually two solutions. x equals 0, then x is equal to 0 again. And then you have square root of 3 and negative square root of 3. All right, let's look at another example of a polynomial equation where we're going to solve by factoring. Let's say we have 2x to the third plus 3x squared minus 8x plus 12. 2x to the third plus 3x squared plus 8x plus 12. Okay, that's the equation that we want to solve by factoring. We first need to get a 0 on one side of the equation. So we need to move the 8x over to the opposite side and the plus 12 over to the opposite side. So here's what's going to happen. Bring down the 2x cubed plus 3x squared. Move that 8x squared over to the opposite side. It's going to be minus 8x. Also move the plus 12 over to the opposite side. It'll be minus 12 equal to 0. Okay, so here we got an equation where 0 is on one side of the equation. Now on the left side, we're going to have to do some factoring here. We got four terms, so the best way to do this is group the, four, the first two terms and group the last two terms. Each one of those groupings, we need to find a common factor. So for 2x cubed plus 3x squared, the common factor is x squared. So let's pull out the x squared. So now 2x cubed divided by x squared will be 2x plus 3x squared divided by x squared will be plus 3. So we got x squared plus 2x plus 3. Now for the minus 8x minus 12 equal to 0, its common factor is, we're going to say negative 4 because they're both negative here. I have minus 8x and minus 12, so it'll be easier to pull out a minus 4 on the outside. So now, negative 8x divided by negative 4 would be a positive 2x. Minus 12 divided by minus 4 is plus 3, equal to 0. Now as you can see here, 2x plus 3 is the common factor that's in both of those, so we'll pull out that 2x plus 3. And then my other factor would be these two terms on the outside, x squared minus 4. And that's equal to 0. So we got 2x plus 3 times x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. However, we can do some more factoring. x squared minus 4 is the differences of squares. We can factor that into two binomials as well. So bring down 2x plus 3. Now for x squared minus 4, since it's the differences of squares, we factor that out as x plus 2 and x minus 2. So, factored completely, you have 2x plus 3 times x, minus, x plus 2 times x minus 2 equal to 0. Now you're going to set each of these binomial factors equal to 0. That means we're going to set 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. And then you'll have x plus 2 is equal to 0. And then x minus 2 
equal to zero. Now each one of these you're going to solve for x. So for 2x plus 3 is equal to 0 if you subtract 3. You can have 2x is equal to negative 3. And then divide by 2, you get x is equal to negative 3 halves. So that's your first solution. The second one for x plus 2 is equal to 0 if you subtract 2. You'll get x is equal to negative 2. And then the third solution for x minus 2 is equal to equal to 0 if you add 2 you'll get x is equal to 2. So your solution set is going to be negative 3 halves, negative 2, positive 2. And I know it's say it has three solutions because the highest exponent here is a 3. This is a third degree polynomial so I would expect to get three solutions for this equation. Okay. Alright, next we'll look at radical equations that contain nth roots. And we're going to look at how to solve these types of radical equations. Alright, and this is just the procedure for solving a radical equation. You want to arrange the terms so that one radical is isolated on one side of the equation. And then you're going to raise both sides of the equation to the nth power to eliminate the nth root. The third step is to solve the resulting equation. And number four is going to be very important because you have to check your proposed solutions in the original equation to see if that proposed solution will satisfy that particular equation. Okay, and that's very important because when you raise both sides of an equation to an even power, like the square, well, like square or to the fourth power, you always check your proposed solutions in the original equation. Because of the fact that extra solutions may be introduced when you raise both sides of a radical equation to an even power. And such solutions, which are not solutions of that given equation, are called extraneous solutions or extraneous roots. Okay, So there might be a case where you may have an extraneous solution in that particular radical equation. So it's important that you have to have to do the check and not say that those two answers will satisfy that equation. You must do the check. And here's an example. Let's say we have the square root of 20 minus 8x is equal to x. The square root of 20 minus 8x is equal to x. And we're going to solve this radical equation. Okay, first things first, that the radical is already by itself. So we don't need to move any terms over to the opposite side. So the next thing we need to do here is eliminate this radical. It is the square root, so the opposite of the square root would be taking the square on both sides. So we're going to square both sides of this equation to eliminate to eliminate the radical. So in this case here the square root of 20 minus 8x and u squared would be 20 minus 8x and that's going to be equal to x squared. Now we have a quadratic equation. So we need to get a zero on one side of the equation. It'll be easier to leave that x squared where it is on the right side and move these terms, the 20 and the minus 8x over to the opposite side. Now when I move the minus 8x over to the opposite side, it will become plus 8x. If I move the 20 over to the opposite side, it will be minus 20. That way on this side, I'll have a zero here. So I'm going to have x squared plus 8x minus 20 equal to 0. This trinomial can be factored into two binomials. Okay, So the x squared is going to be x and x. The factors of negative 20 that will give me 8x as a middle term will be plus 10 and minus 8. So I have x plus 10 times x minus 8 is equal to 0. I mean minus 2. 10x and the minus 2x, that give me 8x. So it's x plus 10 and x minus 2 equal to 0. 
we're going to set each binomial factor equal to 0 here. So we're going to set x plus 10 equal to 0, and then or x minus 2 equal to 0. And then we set each binomial factor equal to 0 here. So for x plus 10 is equal to 0, if we subtract 10, you'll get x is equal to negative 10. And then for x minus 2 is equal to 0, if you add 2, you'll get x is equal to 2. So my two proposed solutions are x is equal to 10, negative 10 or x is equal to positive 2. Now here comes the all-important check, which I'm going to do right here. The all-important check is this. You have to check each one of these proposed solutions to see which ones satisfy the original equation. So we're going to check for x is equal to negative 10. We're using the original equation that we started out with and just replace the x with negative 10. So you're going to have the square root of 20 minus 8 times negative 10. That should equal negative 10. And then minus 8 times that negative 10 will be plus 80. So you're going to have the square root of 20 plus 80. That should equal to negative 10. 20 plus 80 is 100. So the square root of 100 should equal to negative 10. Now we're only taking the principal square root of 100, which is 10. And unfortunately, that does not equal to negative 10. So here we have a false statement. That's what we call an extraneous solution. So here, x equal negative 10, we can cross that out. That one is not a solution to this radical equation. Okay, now let's check for x is equal to 2. We start with the original equation and replace the x with 2. So we got the square root, square root of 20 minus 8 times 2, that should equal to 2. Just replacing each x with 2. And 8 times 2 is 16, so we got the square root of 20 minus 16. That should equal to 2. And then 20 minus 16 is 4, so you have the square root of 4. That should equal to 2. And the square root of 4, the principal square root of 4 is 2, which does equal to 2, which is a true statement. So we can conclude that x equals 2 is the solution to this radical equation. Okay. So that's how we solve a radical equation. Okay, now let's look at a more difficult radical equation like this one. The square root of x plus 3, and then you got the plus 3 outside the radical, equals to x. The square root of x plus 3, plus 3, is equal to x. Okay. In this case, we need to get the square root by itself. Because we got that plus 3 here. So we want to get that square root square root symbol by itself. We need to move the plus 3 over by subtracting 3 on both sides. So that means we're going to have the square root of x plus 3 equals to x minus 3. Okay. Now since the square root is by itself, we can go ahead and take the square on both sides. That means because the opposite of the square root is just simply taking the square. So we take the square on both sides of this equation. Now the square root of x plus 3 and its squared will simply be x plus 3. But that x minus 3 quantity squared is a little bit tricky because that's the square of a binomial. Okay, and I'm going to do this on the side here. If you know x minus 3 quantity squared, that's the same as saying x minus 3 times x plus 3. I'm sorry, x minus 3 times x minus 3. x minus 3 is used as a factor twice, so that's x minus 3 times x minus 3. 
I rewrite this. And then we go ahead and use the formal method by doing x times x, which is the first term, that's x squared. x times minus 3 will be minus 3x. The inner is minus 3 times x, which is minus 3x. And the last is minus 3 times or minus 3 will be plus 9. And then we have like terms that we can combine. So we bring down the x squared, and then minus 3x times or minus 3x is or minus 6x plus 9. So that's what x minus 3 quantity squared is equal to. x squared minus 6x plus 9. Probably the quicker way would be to uh, use the concept of squaring the first term minus twice the product of the two terms in the parentheses plus the square of the last term. Okay. But well, here we got to get a zero on this side of the equation. Here we got x plus 3 is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9. We have to get a zero on this side of the equation, preferably. So if I subtract x on both sides, and also if I subtract 3 on both sides, I'll do all of this in one step. This is what I have. I have a zero here. The right side I'll have x squared minus 6x and a minus 1x will be minus 7x. And then 9 minus 3 will be plus 6. So I have x squared minus 7x plus 6 equal to 0. And then I want to factor that into two binomials. So here, an x and an x. The factors of 6 that would give me negative 7 would be minus 6 and minus 1. So it'll be x minus 6 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. And then you set each binomial factor equal to 0. So we'll set x minus 6 equal to 0. And then x minus 1 is equal to 0. And for each equation, we'll solve for x. So for x minus 6 is equal to 0, if we add 6, you'll have x is equal to positive 6. And then for x minus 1 is equal to 0, add 1, you'll get x is equal to 1. So my two proposed solutions are x is equal to 6 or x is equal to negative 1. x is equal to 1. Now here comes the all-important check. Because you're going to use the original equation that you started off with, and you're going to replace each x in that original equation to see if each one of those will satisfy this equation. We'll start with x is equal to 6. So here, we replace each x with 6. So we get the square root of 6 plus 3. And then plus 3 should equal to 6. Now, underneath the radical, 6 plus 3 is 9. So we have the square root of 9 plus 3 should equal to 6. The square root of 9 is 3. Plus 3 is equal to 6. Add 3 plus 3, it does equal to 6. So here we have a true statement here. So that means that x is equal to 6 is a solution to this equation. Now what about for x is equal to 1? Okay, let's replace each x with 1. So you got the square root of 1 plus 3. Then plus 3 on the outside, that should equal to 1. Now. Underneath the radical, 1 plus 3 does equal to 4, so the square root of 4 plus 3 should equal to 1. And the square root of 4 is 2 plus 3 should equal to 1. Now add 2 plus 3, that's going to give you 5, which unfortunately does not equal to 1. So that is a false statement, which means x equals 1 is not the solution. That's one of our extraneous solutions here. So we cross out x equal 1 and conclude that x is equal to 6 is the only solution that will satisfy this particular radical equation. Okay. So that's how you will solve radical equations. Alright, the next thing we'll look at is 
equations that have rational exponents. Expressions with rational exponents represent radicals. And in this case, if we have a to the m, a to the m over n, that can be rewritten as the nth root of a, and that quantity is to the m to the power of m. That's with the parentheses, and it can be written without it. The nth root of a to the m, where the m, which is your exponent, can be under the radical. They both mean the same thing. A radical expression with rational exponents can be solved by this. Isolating the expression with the rational exponent. That's the first step. And then the second step is raising both sides of the equation to a power that is the reciprocal of the rational exponent. And what I mean by reciprocal, you're just going to just... With fractions, you know, when you take the reciprocal, you always flip or invert the same thing here. With m over n, this reciprocal would be n over m. Okay? And this is the procedure for solving an equation, radical equations of that particular form. x to the m over n is equal to k. Okay? And you want to assume that m and n are positive integers. m over n is in lowest terms, and k is a real number. The procedure says, number one, you want to isolate the expression with the rational exponent. And then number two, you're going to raise both sides of the exponent to the n over m power, which is the reciprocal of m over n. And if your m, which is the denominator, of course, m is your denominator in this case. If it's an even number, then you're going to introduce the plus or minus symbol in it. But if m is odd, you will not use the plus or minus symbol. Okay? Because in this case, the exponent, an odd, odd index, will only have one root. Like the cube root or the fifth root, those will only have like one uh, answer. Whereas with a square root, you're going to have the plus or minus, a positive and a negative number in it. And then number three, you're going to check all proposed solutions in the original equation to find out if they are actually solutions or extraneous solutions. Okay, so that's very important. All right, now let's look at a couple of examples that, that have what they call rational exponents in it. Like this one. We got 5x to the one to the three halves minus minus 25 equal to zero. 5x to the three halves minus 25 is equal to zero. And here we want to solve this particular rational equation. And actually, there are two parts with it, parts A and part B. I'll get to part B later. But we're going to do part A first. 5 to the 3 half, 5x to the 3 halves minus 25 is equal to 0. We want to get x to the 3 halves by itself. So let's first add 25 to both sides. So that means you're going to have 5x to the 3 halves equals 25. Now, we still want to get x to the 3 halves by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by 5, which means you're going to have x to the 3 halves is equal to 5. Now, the next step would be to get rid of that 3 halves. That means we're going to have to raise both sides of this equation to the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is, in this case, 2 thirds. So here, we're going to take x to the 3 halves, and it's going to be raised to the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is 2 thirds. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the right side. That 5 has to be raised to the 2 thirds. Whatever I do on one side of the equation, I have to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm raising both sides of this equation to the power of 2 thirds. 
That way, I'm just going to have x by itself. Because in this case, the 3's are gone and the 2's are gone. I'll just have x to the 1 or just x. Just x. Now, with this one, I'll just have to rewrite this as 5 to the 2 thirds. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to simplify this. Because I can rewrite this in radical form as the cube root of 5 squared. The denominator is your index for the radical. The numerator represents the exponent for 5. So it's the cube root of 5 squared. And of course 5 squared is 25, so it'll just be the cube root of 25. So the solution here is just going to be the cube root of 25. Okay, so that was part A. Now here's part B. This was x to the two-thirds minus 8 equals negative 4. That was from this previous example here. x to the two-thirds minus 8 is equal to negative 4. All right, in this case here, I want to get the x to the two-thirds by itself. So I first add 8 to both sides, which means I'll have x to the two-thirds equals 4. All right, now the next step would be to raise both sides of this equation by the reciprocal of this exponent for x. It's x to the, x to the 2 thirds, so the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 over 2. So I'm going to raise both sides of this equation by 3 over 2. Now, notice that the denominator is an even number. So that means I must introduce plus or minus. And this will be 4 raised to the 3 over 2. I didn't introduce a plus or minus symbol here in part A because the denominator, when I raised both sides to, by the reciprocal, that denominator was an odd number. In this case, the denominator is even for this exponent. So I have to use plus or minus. All right, and then this side will be x, and this will be plus or minus 4 to the 3 halves, which will be plus or minus actually the square root of, because the denominator, denominator is 2, that will be your index, so it's understood to be the square root of 4 to the third power. Now, 4 to the third power is 64, so we have plus or minus the square root of 64. And 64, we can take the square root of 64, is 8. So we're going to have plus or minus 8 as our answer for x. So that solution set will simply just be 8 and negative 8. Okay. So that's basically how you will solve a equation that has rational exponents in it. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is equations that, have, that are quadratic in, in their form. Some equations that are not quadratic can be written in quadratic equations using, appropri using an appropriate substitution. It should be quadratic form using an appropriate substitution. And here's a couple of examples. If you have your x to the fourth minus x squared minus 9 equals to 0, an appropriate substitution would be letting u is equal to x squared. And how would I know that? Uh, one good trick is to look at the, the middle term. That middle term is x squared. We can use that as an appropriate substitution. So usually you can use the middle term as an appropriate substitution. So if we let u is equal to x squared, and we know that x squared to the x squared to the second power will give me x to the fourth, replace the x squared with u, you're going to have u squared minus 8u minus 9 is equal to 0. 
and this also works with rational exponents as well. Like 5x to the 2 thirds plus 11x to the 1 third plus 2 is equal to 0, an appropriate substitution would come from the middle term, x to the 1 third. So we'll let u equal x to the 1 third. And then do the appropriate substitution here. You'll get 5u squared plus 11u plus 2 equal to 0. Okay, so you can see those are types of equations that may not be in quadratic form, but we can write those in quadratic form using an appropriate substitution. Okay. An equation that is quadratic in form is one that can be expressed as a quadratic equation using appropriate substitution. Equations that are quadratic in form contain an expression to, an, to a power. The same expression to that power squared and the constant term. Now we can let u equal the expression to the power. A quadratic equation in u will result. And then you'll solve this quadratic equation for u. And then finally use your substitution to find the values for the variable in the given equation. And here's a couple of examples. Well, here's one example that's like that. We do have a couple of examples that we can look at. Let's look at this one here, x to the fourth minus 5x to the second plus 6 equal to 0. So here, this is the equation that we're going to be looking at. And we're going to solve this equation. Okay, an appropriate substitution would be, if you look at your middle term, that's your x squared. I'm going to let u equal x squared. Now I'm going to rewrite the x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 6 equals 0 as this. I know x squared, x to the fourth is x to the second, and u squared. That's if you raise a power to a power, x to the second and u squared will give you x to the fourth. So I use that. Minus 5x squared plus 6 equal to 0. And I'm letting u equal to x squared, so I'm going to replace the x squared with u, so this will be u squared minus 5u plus 6 equal to 0. Now I have an equation that I can easily factor into two binomials and get the variable by itself. So here, let's factor this into two binomials here. Here we got u and a u. The factors of 6 that would give me negative 5 would be a minus 3 and a minus 2. So I have u minus 3 times u minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to set each binomial factor equal to 0. So you're going to have u minus 3 equal to 0 or u minus 2 equal to 0. And then solve each equation for x, so for u minus 3 is equal to 0, that's going to be u is equal to 3. And then for u minus 2 is equal to 0, that'll just simply be u is equal to 2. We're not done yet, because we want to solve for x. We only solve for u. So now, since we let u is equal to x squared, we're going to replace this u with that x squared. So u equals 3 will be x squared is equal to 3. Or, and since we let u equal x squared again, that u will be replaced with x. So we have x squared is equal to 2. So now the next step would be to solve each one of these for x. So for x squared is equal to 3, if you take the square root on both sides, you're going to have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. And then for x squared is equal to 2, if you take the square root on both sides here, you're going to have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. So your solution set is going to be this. You're going to have square root of 2, negative square root of 2, square root of 3, 
negative square root of 3. So here you got four solutions, and I would expect to be to have four solutions because this is a fourth degree polynomial, so it is expected for, for me to have four solutions. Square root of 2, negative square root of 2, square root of 3, negative square root of 3. Okay, let's look at another example. Here we got this one with rational exponents in it. We got 3x to the 2 thirds minus 11x to the 1 third minus 4 equal to 0. And here we want to solve this equation that has rational exponents in it. So in this case here, here's how we'll solve this as well. Now we need to use an appropriate substitution for this particular problem here. So what I'm going to do here is let u equal to, and I'm going to go to the middle term right here. It has x to the one-third. I'll let u equal x to the one-third as an appropriate substitution. And then I'm going to rewrite the 3x to the two-thirds as this. 3 with the x to the one-third and that's going to be squared because if you do one-third times 2 over 1 that would give you two-thirds. So I'm just rewriting it in a different way with the x to the one-third in the parentheses and the, and the square on the outside. Minus 11 x to the one-third minus 4 equal to 0. And then I'm going to replace the x to the one-third with u because I'm letting u equals x to the one-third. So this is what I'm going to have. 3u squared minus 11u minus 4 equal to 0. And then I'm going to factor into two binomials. The 3u squared will have to be broken in, up into 3u and u. The factors of negative 4 that's going to give me 11u will have to be minus 4 and a plus 1. The minus 4 will have to go here and the plus 1 will have to go here. That way 3u times minus 4 will give me negative 12u and 1u added together will give me minus 11u. So this is 3u plus 1 times u minus 4 equal to 0. Now we set each binomial factor equal to 0 so here we're going to have 3u plus 1 equal to 0, or u minus 4 equal to 0. And then we solve each equation for u. So for 3u plus 1 is equal to 0, subtract 1, you're going to get 3u is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 3, you're going to get u is equal to negative 1 third. And then for u minus 4 is equal to 0, if you add 4 to both sides, you can get u is equal to 4. So in this case here, u is equal to negative 1 third, and u is equal to 4. Again, we're not finished with this problem, because we let u equal x to the negative, x to the 1 third, which means we need to solve for x. Since u was let, since we let u equal negative x, since we let u equal x to the one-third, we replace each u with the x to the one-third. So u equal x to the negative one-third, I'm going to replace that with x to the one-third equal negative one-third. Now to solve for x, we take the reciprocal of one-third, which is three. So that means we're going to raise both sides of this equation to the third power. So one-third times three is going to be a one, so this will be x to the negative one to the third would be one, and three to the third would be 27. So x equal negative one over 27 is one solution. And then for u to the one-fourth, we let x, we let that 
we replace that u with x to the one third. That's going to be equal to four. And just like we did here, we're going to do the reciprocal of one third, which is three. So we raise both sides of this equation by the reciprocal of one third, which is three. Which means we're going to have x to the x equals four to the third power, four times four times four. That's sixty-four. So that's my other value of x. X equals sixty-four. So this final solution set is negative one over twenty-seven and sixty-four. Those are the only solutions that I will have for this particular equation. Okay. So this is how you will solve a rational equation or equations that are quadratic in some form. Alright, next we'll look at absolute value equations. Okay. And this is the procedure for rewriting an absolute value equation without the absolute value bars. If C is a positive real number and X represents any algebraic expression, then the absolute value of X equal to C is going to be equivalent to X is equal to positive C or X is equal to negative C. X is equal to positive C or X is equal to negative C. Okay, so that's how we write absolute value equations. And let's look at an example of how to solve an absolute value equation like this one. Absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 11. Absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 11. And we want to solve this equation. As you can see, the absolute value symbol is by itself. Now we're going to use the procedure for writing an absolute value and equation. Okay, since it's absolute value, we have to write this as two separate equations. The first equation is 2x minus 3 is equal to 11. Or the second equation, 2x minus 3 equals negative 11. What I'm doing here is going back to this particular procedure. Absolute value of x equal to some constant is equivalent to x equal to the constant or x equal the negative or the opposite of that constant. The same thing here in this case. Each equation will solve for x. So for 2x minus 3 is equal to 11, if you add 3, you got 2x is equal to 14. And then divide both sides by 2, you'll have x is equal to 7. Now the second equation, 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 11. If you add 3 to both sides, you got 2x is equal to negative 11 plus 3, that's negative 8. Divide both sides by 2, x is equal to negative 4. So 7 and negative 4 are the two solutions to this absolute value equation. And of course, I'll leave the check up to you to decide whether those two satisfy the original equation. In this case, they do. All right, another example would be this. Absolute value of 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. Absolute value of 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. We want to solve this absolute value equation. All right, the first thing we do here is just write this as two separate equations with the word or in between it. We'll say 2x minus 1 is equal to 5 for the first equation. The second equation will be 2x minus 1 is equal to negative 5. Each one of those will solve for x. So for 2x minus 1 is equal to 5, if you add 1, you're going to have 2x is equal to 6 and then divide both sides by 2, you'll get x is equal to 3. So x equals 3 is one solution. And then for 2x minus 1 is equal to negative 5, if we add 1, you'll have 2x is equal to 
negative 4, then divide both sides by 2, you'll get x is equal to negative 2. So my solution set would be 3, negative 2. And again, I'll leave the check up to you to decide whether those two satisfy the original equation, and more than likely, they do. Okay. Now, let's look at some cases where you must isolate the absolute value expression first before you write your two equations. Okay, because there are some cases where you might have an equation where you might have to move some terms over to the opposite side. Like this one. In fact, I like to do another. Well, let's do this one. 7 times the absolute value of 5x plus 2 is equal to 16. Seven times the absolute value of five x plus two is equal to sixteen. We first need to get the absolute value of five x by itself. That means we need to move the plus two over to the opposite side. Let's start that off by subtracting two on both sides. So that means we're going to have seven multiplied by the absolute value of five x is equal to fourteen. Now we still need to get the absolute value of five x by itself. It's being multiplied by 7, so we need to divide both sides by 7. So that means we're going to have the absolute value of 5x equals to 2. Now the next step would be to write our two equations, since it's absolute value. So the first equation is 5x is equal to 2, or 5x equal negative 2. Each equation will solve for x. So for 5x equals to 2, if we divide by 5, we'll get x is equal to 2 fifths. And then for 5x equal negative 2, also divide by 5, you'll get x is equal to negative 2 fifths. So your solution set would just simply be 2 fifths and negative 2 fifths. Okay. So that will be your solution set for this absolute value equation. All right. And another example that I had is this. Four times the absolute value of 1 minus 2x minus 20 is equal to 0. And here we want to solve this one. Okay. 4 times the absolute value of 1 minus 2x, then minus 20 is equal to 0. We first got to get the absolute value of 1 minus 2x by itself. Let's move that minus 20 over to the opposite side by adding 20 to both sides. So that means we have 4 times 1 minus the absolute value of 2x is equal to 20. And then to get that absolute value of 1 minus 2x by itself, we want to divide both sides by 4. So now you'll have the absolute value of 1 minus 2x is equal to 5. Now from here, we can go ahead and write our two equations. The first equation would be 1 minus 2x is equal to 5. Or then the second equation would be 1 minus 2x is equal to negative 5. Each equation will go ahead and solve for x. So for 1 minus 2x is equal to 5, we're going to subtract 1. So now you got negative 2x is equal to 4. Then divide both sides by negative 2. x will be equal to negative 2. And then the other equation, 1 minus 2x is equal to negative 5. You want to subtract 1. So now negative 2x equals negative 6. And then divide both sides by negative 2. x will be equal to a positive 3. So my solution set here will be negative 2 
and three. Okay, so in cases like this, you want to get the absolute value symbol by itself first before you write your two equations. Okay, so those are just a couple of examples that I went over with you in regard to just that. All right, one last thing I need to cover out of this particular section is a couple of special cases that deal with absolute value equations. Like in this case here, the absolute value of x equals to negative c has no solution. And in this case here, the absolute value of 3x minus 2 is equal to negative 7 has no solution because there is no value of x when you take the absolute value of what's inside that inside those bars will give you the answer of negative 7. So absolute value of x equal to a negative constant has no solution. But for the absolute value of x equal to 0, we can easily find that by just simply solving x equals 0. And the reason for that is that 0 is neither positive nor negative. So we can just find out what that answer is by just saying x equals 0. Like in this case here, absolute value of x minus 2 equal to 0. We can just simply solve that by just saying x minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay? And then just solve for x from there. So this will conclude this particular section on the other types of equations that you might be dealing with throughout college algebra.